Are you ready to kickstart your week with some dirt slinging and tire slaying action motorsports radio that packs the biggest guests? Hi, right, Ken Block here. Hey, my name's Jolene Van Butte. What's up, Brian Deegan here? Vaughn Ginn Jr. here. They've been thrown into one show that has broken down the barriers of what a motorsports radio show should be. This is the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Racer, with support from General Tire, KMC Wheels, Dirtfish, Gibson Exhaust, and MTX Audio, with your host, who also happens to spend his weekends flying 800 horsepower trucks through the dirt, Jim Beaver. When was the last time you saw an off-road or rally driver begging to get behind the wheel of a NASCAR IndyCar? Yep, not happening, but you sure see these pavement racers begging to drive our cars. And his partner in crime every week, a self-proclaimed Canadian moto chick who was jumping triples and taking podiums before most guys even learned to ride, Amy Hood. No one knows how to say my last name. Like, is it really that hard? Amy Hood, like I'm from the hood. Don't get it twisted. Sit back, strap in, and be prepared to join us as we take you through a motorsports ride like no other. Here is the man who carries a steering wheel in one hand and a mic in the other, Jim Beaver. Good morning. Welcome to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver joined here by my partner in crime, Amy Hood. We got a uh, pretty slam lineup today, and uh, I know, Miss Hood, you've been uh, traveling around the country down in Florida now, right? Yeah, you know it. I'm down in Florida, about to head to the gym, and then the beach. Yeah, I think... So I go from one coast to the next. Yeah, I think you've seen more of this country than I have, and that's saying something, because I'm American, and you're... uh... Oh, you're kind of an American now, I think. I, it's safe to say that. No, no. Yeah, you're the, I would never trade my citizenship. No, but I don't what know. You're, you're kind of, you're, you're kind of, uh, you're kind of a, a Canadian with, I don't know. I have to find out a good name for it. But anyways, we got a good show today. First off, the legend, the, one of the most downloaded men on the planet, Adam Carolla. He is on. And uh, we've got Nate Wessel, legendary ramp builder. I think, Amy, you may have met him out at Pastrana Land, maybe. I don't know. Builds all the ramps there. Cool. Nate Wessel? Oh, yeah. You know, I'm, I might have, definitely. Yeah. And then we've also got Jolene Van Butte calling in to talk a little Polaris Razor Star Car. we got Joe Duncan. we got Supercross to talk about. we got uh, we got a little bit of just regular news we're going to throw in in the first segment because Amy and I travel a lot and stuff hit the fan yesterday. So uh, all that and more to talk about today on the Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. Hang tight. It's going to be one hell of a show. Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable, race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. When RJ Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship-winning Razor XP1000. RJ is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder R.J. Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. As certain as the sun rises and sets around the world, OTSFF Group is dedicated to providing flexible, comprehensive, and reliable transportation solutions. Air transportation, ocean freight, ground transportation, or a combination of services. We offer innovative and custom-built packages specifically designed to meet your transportation needs. OTSFF Group has been keeping shipments moving globally for nearly two decades. OTSFF Group, flexible logistics services designed for you. More information at OTSFF. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. 
Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, also the number two ranked, that's right, the number two ranked automotive podcast in the country. I don't know, we got to get to number one, but we're going against like... Who's uh, beating you? Uh, car talk by NPR National Public Radio, like it's a juggernaut. It's been on air for like fifty years or something, and like oh, it's wow. yeah, it's like it's crazy. Like I think number two may be like we just need to know that that's number one because like there's just it's like it's like saying hey I'm gonna get something with better ratings than the Super Bowl. It's just you know it's just kind of probably uh, not yeah. gonna happen. So uh, I think we just need to be real happy with where we're at. But anyways, thanks to all you guys on iTunes who have rated, reviewed, subscribed, uh, tuned in, tune in online when you tune in to national syndication or our military that's uh, across the globe tuning in on uh, the American Forces Network. Thank you guys. Um, thanks to everybody who's tuning into Project Action on Thursdays and rating, reviewing, and subscribing. Amy and I just, uh, I don't know, we, I, got, uh, I got hit with an Instagram message, man. Love it when Jimmy and Amy just get to rap on for like an hour about nothing. So uh, that's kind Aww, of... Aw, awesome. Yeah, so uh, it was kind of kind of cool to get that. I don't know, I get pinged with a lot of stuff, but that one I was like, oh, it is fun when you and I just get to talk. We don't have like segments and stuff like that because we just ramble on about a whole yeah. lot of everything, you know? But Yeah, and I find myself just like continue talking and talking and talking, and I'm like, oh, wait, there's another person here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, also, uh, want to give a shout out to my video, my star car video. Thanks to all you've tuned in on Facebook. Watch that. We're at like 96 or 97,000 views. I'm like, we're like so close to a hundred thousand. So I'm, there's actually a chance we could do it while we're live on air today, reach the hundred thousand mark. So uh, do it, do it. Watch yeah. It. Everybody that's tuning in here, uh, during the commercial break, go over and watch it on Facebook, man. I'd love to get it over the hump while we're on air. It'd be kind of fun, but, uh, um, yeah, Hood, so you've been paying attention to the news. You travel, uh, well, actually, you're traveling more than I do these days, but uh, do you see that deal with United Airlines about dragging the guy off and, like, oh, he's all bloody and beat up? my and- goodness. I was just actually, like, I don't know what I was doing yesterday. I was kind of, like, trying to detach from the world, stay off of social media, and then my man was like, did you see the what happened on United? Because, like, I hate United. I uh, try everything to fly everything but United. Like, I love Southwest. I haven't had Southwest being in Canada. So now that I'm down here, I try to take advantage and fly Southwest everywhere because everyone is so pleasant and awesome, and I get free bags, okay? Yeah. Considering all the crap that I take around the world, I need the free bags. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but then um, I was like, no, what are you talking about? And he's like, are, like, where have you been, like, the last five hours of your life? Like, I'm like, I've been trying to see that. Like, what do you mean? And uh, I guess it's, like, it's gone ridiculously viral. And I really am actually wanting to watch the news to see kind of, like, the global census on this all um, because it was absolutely absurd. And what a huge PR no no for united like i can't believe it and turns out that guy was a surgeon and he needed to be somewhere like like you know i i watched the butterfly effect and like you know just imagine what if like you know somebody was waiting for some type of like life 
altering surgery the surgeon had to get to and you know i just i i I can't even fathom how somebody can do that like how a company or an organization as big as united can do something like that like you know for the amount that they were offering all these people to get off of the plane you know how come they weren't offering you know to pay because i guess they needed to make room for the flight attendants why couldn't they pay for a rental car for those flight attendants rather than ripping people out of their seats unwillingly like mayhem chaos America. Well, it was crazy. <laughs> well, I was close to – well, and I've never understood the overbooking flights. I mean, there's only so, so many damn seats. And, you know, and that's when it, their fault. Yeah, that's – It's not that man's fault. No. That's United's fault for overbooking. What the oh, – that makes yeah. me so mad. Well, Sorry, you guys. I'm just I was so on. Uh, I was on, a, I think it was a Delta flight at one point, and I, I had to uh, set my stuff up, and uh, – I didn't book my seat beforehand, and I've learned if you pay for your seat beforehand and you don't let you know, and you don't let them basically pick it for you, then you're locked in, right? So I just showed up and I saved myself the twenty five dollars. I didn't care where I sat, and I get on the flight, and uh, or I get to the gate, and it says we'll sign you a, a seat when you get to the gate. I'm like, okay, so I go through yeah. and I go up there and say, hey, I need to, I, I need to get my seat assignment, and she says, well, I don't know that we're going to get you on this flight. And I said, what are you talking about? You don't know you're going to get me on this flight. I said, I got a race tonight. And it was literally, I was flying, it was like 5 a.m. And I was flying to North Carolina to race Terracross. And I'm like, you don't understand. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I got I to gotta do TV. I got to race. I said, I got to get on this flight. She says, well, sir, uh, we don't know. And I said, this is a $750 round trip ticket that I paid in full for. What do you mean? And she's like, well, we are, we're overbooked. And I said, not my problem. Find me a spot on the flight. And she's like, well, you didn't pick your seat beforehand, so we don't know that we're going to have one for you. I said, so what did you take my $750 for? And um, That is just wild. But she ended up putting me on the, you know, they got found a seat. And it was like a middle row in the back, which is like the worst seat on earth. But at least I made it to North Carolina. But um, I was like, you know, that was my, but I've never seen him actually physically rip somebody off a plane that was there. To me, that's like, wow. Like, and I don't blame the guy. I was like, he should have went surgeon. willing. It, it, they're like, he should have went willing. Surgeon. Yeah. I'm like, you know, I think it all like, like, I mean, no matter who he is or what he does, but you know, the, like there's all these people in the world who have these very important jobs that make the rest of the world go round. Doctors, surgeons, EMTs, you know, like all of our military and, you know, I just, they, you know, they do a lot for everybody else and the fact that, and, and then, you know, they have a kind of like a really selfless job other than the fact that they may bank, but, you know, like, man, like I just, I can't even fathom like why somebody else maybe didn't give their seat up or, and, and, you know, just the, the power of social media, how, you know, people can capture that moment and, you know, to be spread around the globe like that in a matter of minutes and, is uh, really powerful. And it's, and I think that, you know, hopefully justice will be served and it's just, it's incredible. And I, and, you know, I really hope that I never get booked on a United flight because I'd be mad and I, I'd, I'm, Oh, it's just, it's unfathomable. I can't uh, believe in this day and age that people are just so vicious like that still. I, um, yeah, I've seen people. Pacifist. I don't I, like it. <laughs> I've been at the gate when they were full and said, "Hey, we're full. We're willing to give people money to move flights, and we'll give you like." And I think at one point I've seen them give people like a first class upgrade two hours later on this on the same flight that flew out two hours later, plus like seven hundred and fifty dollar Amazon gift card or yeah. something crazy. Usually, you know? usually if I'm going home, like back to Winnipeg, and you know it's early in the day. And I can fly in kind of whenever later at night. And, like, if I get to this gate and, like, they're like, oh, we need people to volunteer. Like, and, you know, you see some stressed out woman or man at the gate, like, really at the counter, really wanting to get back home. And, like, I'm not in no rush. Like, I just got to get back home whenever. Like, I'm just chilling. I always just take the next flight. And I just kind of confirm that there's going to be another flight later that day. And, like, usually when I'm on my way home, I just don't care. So I will give it to that person who really needs to get out of here. But... But still, I just think they took it too far. It's just ridiculous. Crazy. Yeah, nuts. It's, it's, seriously, it's crazy. You're right. You know what else is crazy? The Supercross this weekend. Like, man, I, I was kind of recapping with my mom, and, like, it was kind of one of the most entertaining Supercrosses of the year. I, you know? And it, that's saying something. It tied up. <laughs> yeah, like, it, it really was. with The crashes in the 250 class, and... Uh, I mean, there was a little bit, not as much drama, but it was actually just really entertaining to watch. The battles were intense. You know, we, we, Dungey and Tomac tied for points going three more races of the season, and they're tied. And, you know, D- 
Dungey didn't even make the podium this weekend. Like, wow, it was just really like a, a strange outcome for the weekend racing. Congratulations to Marvin. But did yes. you see Marvin's victory lap, Jim? No, I, I've only I only got to see bits and pieces. I wasn't able. Oh uh, my god! I wasn't able to watch and the whole typical thing. Typical Marvin. Typical Marvin pulled the Marvin Muskan that we all love, know and love. Like he's just a hilarious guy. Um, yeah. Wins the moto, comes like gets off, like goes on to you know like one of the jumps, does his like half lap, rips his goggles off, goes to throw it in the crowd, and then goes to do a jump. Nose wheelies into the jump, crashes <laughs> like on his victory lap. It was so funny, and he, you could just see him laughing, and he like grabs his helmet, shakes his head, like, "Oh wow!" Like he's just such a character, yeah. and it's so funny, and he just has such a devoted fan base because he's not afraid to just be his true self and let his personality shine. And I love that about him. And uh, very, you know, I'm very, very happy for his win. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we got a lot of Supercross to talk about in the next segment. Uh, lots of stuff we want to touch base on. We're going to take a short commercial break. And uh, when we come back, we've got some Supercross on tap with Amy Hood and I here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host the Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP1000 thousand fox edition polaris has you handled take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a polaris razor check out the full polaris razor lineup at polaris.com or follow them on facebook instagram and twitter at polaris razor are you looking for a place to push yourself behind the wheel and see how your driving skills stack up? Dirtfish Rally School is that place. Located on 315 acres of pristine automotive playground at the foot of the Cascade Mountains in Snoqualmie, Washington, right outside of Seattle, Dirtfish Rally School is a one-of-a-kind place where everyone from first-time drivers to seasoned professionals like Bucky Lassick and Antoine Lestage can push themselves to their limit. Whether driving the high-performance rally-prepped all-wheel drive Subaru Impreza STI is what you're looking for, or you'd rather hang it all out in the rear-wheel drive Subaru BR Z's, Dirtfish Rally School has something for everyone. Classes are available from two hours to three full days and feature instructors with over 150 years of combined racing experience. Whether you're looking to become the best and get an edge on the competition or just looking to freshen your skills behind the wheel, Dirtfish Rally School is the place to go. For more information on registering for classes, visit Dirtfish on the web at dirtfish.com or to check out the latest happenings from Dirtfish, follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dirtfish Rally. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here, holding it down on another edition of... Your favorite action motorsports radio show. And uh, so, Hood, going back to Supercross, I wasn't able to watch it because I was actually, once a year I do uh, the police department, local police department has a charity home run derby. And so uh, I always do this home run derby for charity, which is always a ton of fun. And I use muscles that I forgot I had. 
Um, <laughs> but uh, um, so no, going back to Supercross, I was only able to catch bits and pieces of this. But uh, you got to give me the breakdown um, on uh, on the 450. So I know Marvin won, Tomac second, Anderson third, Dungey off the podium. Was Dungey just hold, out of touch the whole time, or what? I mean, um, I just. I mean, again, I only catch highlights right now because I was racing on the weekend as well. I was in Cincinnati and I had a show. Um, but I always catch the highlights and, you know, I just, I don't know what's going on. Like, I, I just think that, I don't think Dungey is out of his groove. I just think the rest of the field has really stepped it up, um, you know, because they know it's anybody's game. They know that Dungey's not cleaning the, like, you know, coming through a clean sweep of the pack anymore. And, I think everybody else has really turned up the volume and, um, you know, don't get me wrong. Like Anderson is an extremely dominant rider and same as Marvin Moustan. Like the, the, those top four guys are all in the chase for the championship. I mean, yeah, some are completely out of the points, but it doesn't mean that they're not striving for that number one position every single weekend. So I just think the field is extremely stacked. Um, I, you know, I don't think that Dungy is the type of rider who, you know, loses his mojo. You know, we all know he's extremely consistent, extremely confident, and, you know, his skill set is just above and beyond most people's. And um, I just think that the rest of the field is really trying to push for those those podium positions more more so than before. Because usually, you know, we have one or two riders that are just, are just gone and, you know, Everybody else kind of has a feeling that like, okay, well, you know, we're just going to put it in cruise control. There's only three rounds left. And then with the transition to outdoors, no one really wants to make any mistakes, jeopardize an injury. So I just think right now everyone's really laying it on the line. And it's really cool to see because then we get these change up in the podium positions like this weekend. Yeah. Well, and he, okay, so Dungy, for the first time in a long time, he is no longer holding that, uh, you know, the red plate. Do you think like this was enough, like, all of a sudden, it's like a slapped reality. Like, crap, we're going in the next round. I don't have that. I don't have that red plate, man. I need to. You know, do, you, do we think we're going to see like a dungy? You know, uh, we've seen it before where he can pour it on. And, and yes, he, so he... I was just going to say we've seen it before. I know exactly what you're saying. And like, dungy knows how to turn up the volume when it counts. And that is, you know, what very skilled riders know how to do and not just turn it up and be radical and out of control like you know usually we've seen James Stewart do the last few rounds or even Ken Roxon you know when he needed to turn it up sometimes he would get out of control Dungy has that nice slow progression where he knows how to turn it up and still maintain that control and uh but you know same with Tomac Eli Tomac does as well he's maybe not be as consistent as R Ryan Dungy but you know he's He's proven his point that, you know, he's in this to win this. And, you know, he I know more than anybody, that man is hungry for a Supercross title. And, I, you know, I checked out my Supercross poll. 70% think that Eli Tomek is going to take the win this year. And I would really like to bet the money on him. I do like to bet on the underdog. Um, I'm really – it's really been an exciting year for Eli Tomek, seeing him kind of get out, like shake his funk. He is very – very great outdoor rider, but he's always really struggled in Supercross. So being able to see him pull it all together and, you know, battle for the lead going into these last three rounds is just, it's been fun. It's, it's been so interesting and made it such an interesting series for the fans. And, and uh, it's been really cool to watch and see his progression as well. But um, I think both of them are going to turn it up. So it just it really comes down, Jim, to consistency. Who is going to be consistent these last three rounds? And I think the most inconsistent person we've seen, you know, in the last two or three has been Dungy. You know, he did not podium this weekend. Uh, we know Eli Tomek has a tendency to put Lair down a couple times. But, um, you know, I think he's going to make some smart decisions and just, you know, find that find that sixth gear, if you will. Like, I think he's going to turn the speed up. But but maintain his smooth, calm, consistent demeanor because that's what this is. This is a marathon. You know, there's yeah. three more rounds left. Any type of mistake is going to cost these riders the championship. So consistency here is key. Yeah, and I think so we're going to see, 
you know, I, and I don't know because they're both veteran riders. You know, it's not one over the other. Both Eli and Ryan Dungey have been doing this for years, and this ain't their first 450 rodeo. You know, they've been here before. I think they understand the marathon process, and I think they're – honestly, I think – Man, and we're tied. Like, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's going to be very, very interesting. We're just going to have to see who's going to keep it cool, calm, collective, and, you know, power through. Yeah, you know Supercross has got to be loving this about right now because ratings are going to go through I the roof. Know. They've got an off week with Easter coming up, and uh, you know what I mean? So I think this is great. It, like, builds up. The guys are going to be 110%. They're going to be rested. They're going to get a chance. Three rounds, lay it all on the line. Starting from oh. scratch, we're dead even a tie. This is like, I mean, you can't write a storyline. The past couple of years, by this point, it's been over. And you and I have been like, eh, this sucks. So let's talk about outdoors. Well, here we are. We're still yeah, talking yeah, about, know. you know, we're just still talking Supercross. That, to me, that's exciting because by now we would have thought either Roxon or Dungey would have this thing locked up and it would have been over and everybody would be, you know, these guys wouldn't even yeah, be training yeah. for Supercross anymore. They'd be riding outdoors already, you know. I guarantee you Dungey hadn't touched his outdoor bike yet. You know, it's like no, I know, I know, I'm collecting <laughs> dust and cobwebs. But I, I, and I, I like how you said that. Like, I, I hope this carries on until the last round. Like, I hope you know someone doesn't crash out and lose a whole bunch of points. Like, I hope they keep the points chase extremely tight and close. I mean, obviously, next weekend we're going to have a points winner, a points leader. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're tied right now. So unless God knows if they can get even amount of points, I don't. I mean, it's possible, but. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I'm thinking. You know, I'm thinking. Tomac takes. I'm thinking. Tomac takes the next win. Dungey comes back and takes the win after that, and then we have. We, and and we still have a tie going into the final event. I'm saying Dungey's going to squeak out a win, that. and Tomac will get one, and then boom, we're we're tie game going into the finals. I don't know. It's going to be very interesting. We're going to really see who's putting the work in the off time. We're going to like. It really comes down to who wants it more now. Who is going to put the homework in? You know, to know what what they got to do, how they got to ride in the mentality, like who has the mental toughness, because this is where your, you know, your mental toughness really kicks into play and you can, you know, you can really, this is where you envision that championship and then you ride like it. Like it's, it's so hand in hand, your ability with your mindset and uh, we're going to see who's got it. And uh, I don't know. I think it's so mad. I'm just going to say it out there right now. Love Dungey's awesome dude, whatever. Great writer. <laughs> but I, I think that Tomek wants it more. And sometimes, like, you know, I used to always say this when at my motocross schools, when we talked about the whole shot, you know, you got 40 guys on the line who all want the same thing. And that's to get that whole shot. And it's going to be, comes down to who wants it more. And, you know, it's going to come down to R Ryan Dungey and Eli Tomek who wants this championship more. And uh, who's going to really lay it on the line. And I'm a, uh, so excited to watch it. It'll yeah, it's, it, I'm stoked. So, um, yeah, I gotta gotta ask too before we let you go. I'm um, kind of switching gears from Supercross talk a bit, but uh, going back to uh, uh, Monster Jam, I know you've been uh, doing some stuff. I saw, I think it was uh, son of, son of a digger. There's uh, there's a run going on, a freestyle run, I think, and uh, I saw the most ridiculous thing. So I gotta ask you. How do you how does the gearbox work in those? Because I'm watching him and he's like up on two wheels and he's like moving from forward and reverse like that quick. And I know yeah. my trophy truck it takes you know what I mean it takes a few seconds to shift you know back and forth. Well, Demo, I mean, I'll send you a video because um, well the gearing for stadium is very different than the gearing for arena, right? Okay. Like we're we're working in like a fourth of what they are. <laughs> but um, I mean my. I practice, I sit in my truck, close my eyes, and I practice going from second to reverse and reverse to first. And I sit there with my eyes closed practicing the transition because the second I'm, second I'm doing a wheelie hit and I'm feeling myself in the air almost over-rotating, you better believe I'm already in second gear waiting for landing and throwing it into, into reverse. And, you know, from reverse to first, it doesn't like it very much. And, like, when you're going wide open, it's obviously not good on the, on the engine or transition or whatever. But um, I don't know how they're geared differently compared to outdoors. Like our, I say, I always say outdoors and it's super funny because <laughs> I always like compare stadiums to outdoors or even say like the big guys, like 450s to 250s because it's kind of how I feel we are. Um, but, but, um, but no, like I can make that transition like almost instantaneously, but that's what we need to do to be able to recover from, you know, getting in a sticky situation. But I've done it three times where I have, 
been like I honestly like I almost like touched my my rear cage to the ground but I've been in reverse and been able to get out of it because I just it's just so you got to be so like conscious of what you're doing and where you are and I mean you don't really you can't like you can move your head around or anything just your eyeballs to know where you are but um yeah that that transition is absolutely like the quickest thing in the world like I can be in reverse and be like Bruh! and just uh and save it but but yeah I yeah. guess you'll you have know, to send me a video I'd like to see that I'd like to see how the gearbox oh, yeah. works I, I posted one a long time ago like a really wicked save but it's you know you got to be in reverse before you even land half the time yeah. or you know just know how to do it right away but it, it's not easy like it takes a while to figure it all out and like i mean and also depending on how hard the hit is like you could be completely forget about thir- uh, about reverse and be like oh god what happened like, <laughs> it's kind of funny like how mindful you really need to be and cool calm collected in the cab because because of like split second decisions like that where you know, it's, it's either you're going to go backwards or you're going to save and be able to continue your freestyle run by, you know, throwing it into reverse. It's not an easy process, but for some reason I figured it out. So I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> awesome. Well, I got to, uh, we got to go to a commercial break here. Hood, I know you're heading off to the beach. Already. Um, I'm going to always fun. Right now. All so right. Got to get some training in. All right. Sounds good. Thanks a lot, Amy. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. All right. And we are going to take a short commercial break here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, Jolene Van Vute. She is on the line after the break. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host the Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris. Polaris Razor. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Sound of the racetrack and the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Since 1970, Casey Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports. Beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems, Casey Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at kchighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at KC Highlights. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Whoa! 
Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'd like to welcome my next guest and my Polaris Razor star car teammate, Jolene Van Vute, to the line. How's everything going, Joe? Good morning. How's it going? Good. Sounds like you just woke up, man. Are you, uh, are you on a bender this weekend or what? Uh, no, I've been sick for about 10 days. So. <laughs> <laughs> man, I was hoping to get some fun stories out of you, man. Being sick, that's not a fun one. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I've been trying to kind of pull myself out of it the last few days and just get on with life. But no, I was sitting on a couch for five days, which wasn't so fun. Yeah, I saw uh, <laughs> Sarah Price tried to drag you out of it a bit, though. Huh? You got you were finally able to go out and shred those hills out there behind uh, out there out in Elsinore. How was that? Yeah, it was super fun. I mean, I've seen Sarah post you know photos of going back there and having fun with her friends and on her dirt bike and on her razor and uh, I've always said I want to come out and ride so you know I kind of made a, a special trip out this way to get to do some riding with her and then I got super super sick but um I didn't let it didn't let it stop me she was still willing to let me come and stay at her house and uh I just kind of powered through it yeah I know uh when uh, when we were going to do this, like, the first uh, video shoot for that little 30-second promo video or something for Star Car, like, Sarah's like, James and I got the spot. We need to film out here. I'm like, I don't want to film in Lake Elsinore. I'm like, there's no – and they're like, no, we got the spot. We got the spot. And I'm like, all right, I'm putting faith in you guys. And we went out there, and I was like, oh, my gosh. I'm like, I got to come back here. This is freaking amazing. Like, I didn't realize – the amount of trails and stuff like that they had out there. It was just crazy. I know they took you to some place called like the bunker. I wasn't able to actually get out there. So, uh, I don't know. Yeah, just, the, it looks there's awesome. definitely a lot of cool riding out there, different trails. I mean, you can ride your dirt bike, you can uh, go mountain bike riding and, uh, take out the razors and stuff like that. And then they, they have a specific trail. They take over to the bomb shelter, which is, uh, the drop zone there in Paris, I believe. And there's an indoor sky uh, tunnel and you just kind of can sit and have some breakfast or lunch. You know, we went there a couple times and one morning we did breakfast. So you, you know, you have this fun ride out and you know, a big group of you sit and have breakfast and then you take off and, and ride around again. So it's a really cool little area to get to have that environment. And yeah, it's kind of right in her backyard. Yeah. So I got to ask too, I know you were out there with her, but before that, I, I gotta, I gotta say, I'm a bit jealous. You were uh, up in Utah. You got to do some uh, snow bike riding, which is something I haven't had a chance to do yet. I've called, I don't know how many snow bike races, but I haven't actually been on one. How was your first experience on a snow bike? Cause I've, I've heard all these different stories and people it's like, I mean, dirt bike guys and girls, you know what I mean? Say it, it's an adjustment. It's different. I mean, how was it for you? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it's cool to be on another uh, Polaris product, uh, the this, this timber sled that they have. And uh, I was able to go up there and, and hang out with Brock, who um, is really good at, at riding in the backcountry and uh, has crossed over from, from dirt bikes and sleds over onto the timber sled. And he was a great teacher and he was able to, you know, give me a lot of insight kind of going out to the mountains on how, how to do the crossover from the bike to, to the, the timber sled. It, I was ex to say I was exhausted after the first day and it was not because it was um, a motorcycle. It was more just because I was fighting the adjustment. Uh -huh. um, I just found it really difficult to kind of rely on the fact that there was this ski on the front and then the track at the back is uh, square, right? So you don't have, you really got to exaggerate like your leans and, and different things like that. And you can't really steer uh, the front end. It, it's always kind of fighting you. So I was just really just having to, you know, take a few moments and, and adjust to that, which when you grow up riding motorcycles, you, the transfer over will be fine. It just takes a little bit of understanding how it now works with, um, you know, with the adjustments and, the crazy part about it is the hardest part of the trail is getting out to the backcountry. So the backcountry, once I got out there and we were able to just kind of free ride and, and really like get into the turns kind of like um, even when you're, you know, speed riding kind of trails or, or you're like riding around on um, like a cross rocket or something like that, a sport bike out and just like doing big turns. But it, the hardest part was getting out to there because there's these tiny trails that you got 
you know, you got to kind of maneuver through trees that are only a few feet wide, as you know, as wide as the bars are. And that was the hard part. So I was like, by the time I just got to the backcountry within like the first 30 minutes, I was already, I was already so exhausted with like, <laughs> oh my God, my arms hurt. I think I have arm pump already. But it was just kind of, you know, be, doing something new and not really knowing what I was doing and then trying to keep up with all these people that I was with that knew exactly what they were doing right away. Um, but I definitely enjoyed, I mean, I had two amazing days. The weather was great. Couldn't have asked for anything better. Uh, great group of people to ride with. They were, you know, very understanding as, you know, when I couldn't, you know, get the hang of something right away or needed help, then they were right there to kind of tell me what to do next time or help me through it or kind of be like, hey, well, this would be really cool if you jumped. I was like, okay, you know, like, <laughs> just, I just kind of was like, well, they said, I, they, you know, they obviously know my skill level and they've seen me ride and they're not going to point me in too bad of a direction. So Brock's like, yeah, you could totally jump like right off that. I was like, okay. So I just launched the timber sled. He's like, holy crap. He's like, you launched that way further than I was expecting. That was awesome. I was like, well, you told me to launch it. <laughs> See, at least when you're in the back country and you put it over, you, you've you got a little bit of powder there to, to help cushion it. It's not like falling on a dirt motor. Yeah. I mean, track, anytime right? I really fell, it was, a lot of the time it was when I was going slow or we were trying to like traversing over something super steep and I'd never done that before. And I, you know, you're trying to make sure you stay weighted on the one side and all this type of stuff. So, um, I never really had too bad of a get off or anything like that, but luckily if you do, you'd fall, you know, right into a few feet of powder, which is really awesome. And so the crashes aren't, you know, as hard. I mean, you, I'm, fairly certain you can find a hard crash if you're yeah. looking for it but uh it, you know it's a little bit more forgiving than uh than dirt yeah i know like it, with me too like the backcountry stuff was gnarly I, I was able to do something in colorado on a snowmobile and uh like to me shifting the weight and like putting like on the sled getting all your weight on one side of the sled and you're literally like doing a dance in the backcountry around the snowmobile you know what i mean to get your weight positioned and things like that it was different because it was unlike anything i'd ever done and i can only imagine the you know the snow bike is the same way it's uh I don't know. You're becoming like quite the uh, winter action sports athlete, Joe. Like you're doing snow cross and now you got the timber sled going on. You're like finding this whole new like area of your career, right? Yeah, I definitely um, was stoked to get back into snow this year. I, you know, was touring with Nitro for the past six years and then having that whole year off after my accident. Um, I I hadn't got to be around snow. Like I hadn't been snowboarding. I hadn't been on a snowmobile. Um, I you know of this whole new era of uh, snow bike timber sleds had had come up and started to get really popular. And I had not been able to get out to the mountains or to the snow or anything like that. I mean, I'd go home at Christmas time for a couple weeks uh, back there to you know London, Ontario, Canada, and we never really had a lot of snow for the little bit of time that I was home and, and then I would be off again and back somewhere that doesn't have snow or doesn't have that type of activities going on and just constantly touring and busy. So it was really cool to kind of take this year and do all these things that I've been wanting to do for so long and things that I used to do that I really missed and, and get to focus on, you know, enjoying those things again. So I, you know, I took the opportunity to go snowboarding a few times. I had the uh, offer from the two family to try some snow cross, and I really wanted to give that a hand. And then the timber sleds, I, you know, there's definitely something that's up and coming. Um, it keeps it has a lot of traction. It keeps moving. It, you know, with it being presented at X Games, there's a possibility for, for other things to come from that. So I just really wanted to get on one and see what they were all about. So that definitely just threw me right into – all those snow activities and I've spent more time in the snow than I, you know, have in the past seven, eight years of my life, which was awesome for me because I grew up that way. I grew up playing in the snow all winter long and I absolutely love it. So it was really nice to get to go back to that and just do a bunch of stuff that I really wanted to do instead of being on a schedule for a tour and doing a lot of things that maybe I wasn't always so keen on, but it was, it was part of the show or it was part of the tour. 
Yeah. So uh, you, um, I know you saw on the graphic. So um, Nate Wessel, he's coming on. Uh, it's the hour number two. He's coming out to race some Terracross with us this year, which I'm stoked on. Right, because I know he's really getting into the razors, but he's sending me questions for you, and I'm laughing because I'm sure this is an oh, inside God. joke. So this is this is from Nate Wessel, who is coming on hour number two. He goes, "Ask Jolene if she uh, if she feels she's in competition with that jean jacket Canadian snowmobile guy." I have no idea what. The... I don't know what that means. Uh, I don't know either, but uh, that was for Nate Wessel. So, um, oh, no. Nate, yeah. Nate is uh, yes, he's. He's comedy at all times, and he's a great addition to Terracross. I mean, I think he's going to absolutely kill it out there, and he's just sort of a great personality in general. Super fun to have around. Yeah, he's uh – um, well, I got him on the podcast and it was like an hour and a half interview. And it was like one point him and I were like, Oh, we got to stop because like I grew up in the BMX industry and was riding in contests about the time Nate was like really peaking and in all the videos and stuff. And like, he was legend status to me, you know, and now like he's my friend. It's so this weird thing, but, um, yeah, he is a legend. Definitely. Yeah. I'm so looking forward. Like I was already pitching ideas. I've got this front flip razor ramp in my mind and I, and, uh, I was talking to him about it and immediately him and Pastrana are both lighting up. You know what I mean? Like, like, oh, we got to make this happen. I'm like, I don't. I said, I've got the idea for the ramp that'll make the car flip. I don't know that I want to be the one to flip it. <laughs> and they're like, well, if you come up with a design, you got to be the well, one to flip it. And I'm like, oh man, what am I getting myself into here? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is one of the golden rules of yeah. Nitro is generally when you come up with the concept or the stunt idea uh, that you are the first to test it. That has sort of been something that's always stuck with us. Always a golden rule. Um, but I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure we could find somebody else to test it. <laughs> that one sounds kind of interesting enough that there might be some volunteers there. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, speaking of volunteers, I know you're volunteering to jump back in the star car with me, uh, this coming weekend. I don't know. I think we got a little redemption to get Joe. Don't you think? Definitely. Um, really excited to get back in the car and, and do some more racing with you and, you know, get that part of the finish line this time it was a huge disappointment for me um you know my first desert race to not get to cross the finish line and I you know I felt as a teammate I felt I'd let everybody down and that so that was really hard for me and um I just felt super disappointed that I you know that your your baby and your concept and everything came to light and it was going so well and everything was just like running perfectly and then I just made sort of a rookie mistake and and uh yeah, we, we tried to limp her over the finish line, but it just wasn't going to happen for us. So I definitely feel that, you know, this weekend we got it. We're going to make this happen, and I've learned – Got to learn from my mistakes. Absolutely. We're going to make it happen. And I know uh, our recap video, I was just looking, we're at like 96 or 7,000 views. So we're almost over the hump to 100,000. So I'm thinking, I'm predicting today it's going to happen. So hopefully. Uh, oh, that's good. Yeah, nice. So we're almost to that magic 100K number. But uh, um, yeah, I know you're heading out, Sparkle. we got some testing to do in the Star Car tomorrow. But, um, you know, thanks for, uh, thanks for calling in. We will see you later today. And, uh, you know, looking forward to it. Yeah, thank you for having me on, and I'll see you tonight. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Jolene. Bye. Bye. All right, that was Jolene Van Viet calling in, talk a little uh, snowmobile, snow bike. I don't know. She's been all over the place uh, recently, which is all good. She's going to be here doing some testing with me in the Star Car. We are in action at the UTV World Championship this weekend, and uh, I will actually be doing some live radio on Friday from Continuity. Sarah Price going to be my co-host over there at uh, the UTV World Championship. Probably one o'clock. I think we're going to go live, so I'll be looking for my social media for that times and links. Uh, but we will be live at the UTV World Championship with the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. So you don't want to miss that. And then racing the star car on Saturday, going to be fun. So uh, we're going to take a short break. We come back. uh, I don't know. we got some news to catch up on. And then hour number two, Nate Wessel, Joe Duncan, Adam the Ace Corolla. Doesn't get much better than that. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a down and dirty radio show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it, so when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than 
and Polaris in their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP 1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Do you race or are you a weekend warrior? Have you checked on the date on your helmet recently? Don't get caught off guard by using an outdated helmet. Impact Racing, the leader in motorsport safety, has new SA 2015 helmets to fit your budget. Whether you're looking for a helmet with a full carbon fiber shell to take you to victory at the Indy 500, or just looking for some helmets for a weekend at Glamis, Impact Racing has a helmet for you. Find out more information at impactraceproducts.com or on Facebook at Impact Safety. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. at the Blue Water Resort and Casino and they're giving away $76,000 in cash. Oh yeah, the more we play, the more entries we can earn. Woohoo! Plus, they're giving away over 3000 in cash every Saturday. Then on Saturday, June 24th, a guaranteed 43000 in cash will be given away. See the club for details. Blue Water Resort and Casino Right on the water Right on the money MMA at its best and it's back. It's the RUF 13. Live cage fights on the river in the Blue Water Resort and Casino Showroom Saturday, May 13th with With live live fights starting at 7 p.m. Get your $25 ringside tickets now. General admission is just $15. Doors open at 6 p.m. Tickets available online or at the gift shop. Live cage fights on the river. Blue Water Resort and Casino. Right on the water. Right on the money. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Man, what an hour number one as we kind of wind down this very first hour of the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Man, Amy Hood and her and I wrap it on just about everything. Jolene Van Vute, and that primes the pump for hour number two. We got Joe Duncan calling in to kick things off. We got Nate Wessel, legendary ramp builder, legendary in BMX circles, and he's going Terracross racing. Uh, talk about a uh, pretty exciting announcement coming today out of Terracross. I know I talked with Joe Duncan uh, uh, off the record yesterday, and uh, man, it's uh, they've almost got women's division and men's divisions all filled up for Terracross this next year. Got that amazing TV package on CBS Sports Network that uh, I've been lucky enough to uh, um, be one of the personalities on. But uh, man, it's uh, it's crazy. It's just blowing up over there. Super stoked. Uh, looks like Nate Wesley's going to be in my division, so uh, it's going to be fun to talk about that. He and I are going to be banging some doors this year. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, uh, thanks to all of you guys for tuning in today uh, as we wind down this hour number one. Also want to mention, don't forget uh, Project Action dropping every Thursday on the Podcast One Network and iTunes as well as my website. And uh, please make sure and go over there and subscribe to that, rate and review. Last week I had Amy Hood as my guest. The week before we had Colette Davis. Um, this week, uh, Adam Carolla, we're going to have him in depth. Uh, so we've got him on air today, but that interview is so much longer than what we're, uh, what we're airing. We're going to put it in uncut and uncensored in Project Action this week. And then the upcoming weeks, I've got Antron Brown. It also looks like we're going to have Naomi Kyle. You know her from IGN, um, one of the personalities over there. She's going to be on air. Really looking forward to having Naomi Kyle on. Uh, Great story there. So uh, it's going to be, you know, we've got a mix of action sports, some racing, some celebrities. Uh, a lot of fun over there on Project Action. So we're going to take a short commercial break. We come back. We've got some UTV World Championship to talk here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Lee Valley. 
And I choose Polaris just because they have the best quality, highest performing, most fun machines out there. Only one company has taken Levi Lavalley to 10 X Games medals, snowcross championships, a double backflip, and a world record long jump of 412 feet across the San Diego Harbor on New Year's Eve, and that company is Polaris. Whether it's dominating the X Games, racing a stock Polaris Razor XP1000 in the Terracross Championship, or just hitting the trail on the weekend, for over 20 years, Levi has relied on the same quality Polaris vehicles and products you can purchase at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of action sports legend Levi LaValle and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. So, this weekend, you're tuning in here. We got the UTV World Championship. That is the World Championship. Biggest UTV race on the planet. It's happening in Laughlin, Nevada. Yours truly, along with Jolene Van Butte. We're going to be racing in it, and it is going to be one heck of a good time, let me tell you. So, uh... Um, I'm just looking at this entry list for this event. So they got a short course race and a desert race. They got kids races. They're also throwing in some dirt bikes and some quads. We're not going to talk about that much though, because it's the UTV world championship. So I'm just looking down the turbo class in the desert, which I'm entered in 54 entries in our class. Crazy. I got lucky enough to be 14th off the line. So we do like a dead engine land rush start, right? So, uh, uh, basically they wave the flag. You got to start your razor and take off. And uh, I get to go in the first group. So it's like groups of 15. So 15, 15, 15. So I get to go because I drew 14th off the first wave, which is great because uh, not as much traffic up there. Uh, guys in the back, not so good. But uh, uh, I'm just looking down this list. I mean, you've got, you know, Guthrie Jr. You've got Brandon Sims, Craig Scanlon, Matlock, uh, myself, obviously, and Jolene Van Vute. Um Looks like Robbie Gordon on the entry list. Uh, you got Jake Carver, a lot of factory guys. The Merrills, a UTV Wolf Pack. You got Reese Mad Skills Millen Racing. Um, you got uh, the boys from Cognito. I mean, it's just uh, man, what a uh, what a slam packed entry list. Then you got the short course going off, and uh, you know, and that's got uh, you know their own list of drivers. It's just. Uh, Man, this is going to be a uh, a crazy good event. Uh, if you've got a chance to get out there, uh, make your way to Laughlin, Nevada if you're in the southwest. Worth it. Hotel rooms are cheap. I think like 40 bucks a night. Uh, you can also camp. Um, but uh, seriously, stuff going on. Things kick off Thursday night. Uh, we're going to have the UTV Pit Crew Challenge. I'll be emceeing that. Star Car will be in there with my boys from IMG. They're going to be pitting the car in there. Then Friday, continuously, big day. Uh, Star Car will be on display at the Impact booth. I will be doing radio for those of you online uh, from 1 o'clock to like 1.30, 2 o'clock. Sarah Price, my co-host, it'll be at downanddirtyshow.com. Social media channels will be blowing it up, letting you know where to tune in. But that'll be happening live, plus you can get it on demand. Then Saturday, it's race day. We got, uh, we've got 16 or no, 10 16-mile laps for the desert guys, and then we got three 16-mile laps for the short course guys. It's going to be one epic event. It's going to be off the hook, man. Let me tell you, it's going to be the biggest UTV race in the history of the world. And, uh, you know, hopefully you guys can make it out there. If you can't, make sure and tune in to me on the live radio show at uh, 1 o'clock on, uh, on Friday. But uh, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we got Joe Dunk with Terracross on the line here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a down and dirty radio show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest, 
and hands down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP 1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. All the hits of Boston and Sticks. Boston Sticks, a tribute to two great rock bands, live in the Blue Water Resort and Casino Showroom. Don't miss David Victor, former lead singer of Boston, perform Boston and Sticks' greatest hits Saturday, May 27th. Door is open at 7 p.m. Show starts at 8. General admission tickets just $25. VIP only $40. Tickets on sale now. Get your tickets at the gift shop or online. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver joined on the line by Joe Duncan. This is our Terracross Starts with Optimus segment, brought to you by our good friends at Optimus Starters, the best starters in power sports, hands down. They start every car on the grid in uh, Terracross, don't they, Joe Duncan? I don't think anybody has failed to start at Terracross, I can say that. In the three years I've been involved, we've never had a car not start. We have never had a car not start, thanks to Optimus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I should say we've had cars not start, but it wasn't due to Optimus. It was because, in my case, I almost burned it to the ground or something, you know. But <laughs> yeah, they, they, you know, it's, uh, some of the guys are a little rough, and, and more importantly, some of the girls are a little rough on the old razors. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, we had Jolene Van Viewed on earlier. I know she's been out doing some timber sledding and racing with the Katoos and she's looking forward to get back in Terracross. And uh, we got a mutual friend, Nate Wessel. He's going to be joining us here in a few minutes. Uh, man, Nate Wessel, I, I, he, he and I, we've been talking, uh, I don't know, we've known each other for a while through social media and stuff, but, uh, I've been getting videos like he's been practicing up Joe. I think, you know, he's, he's going in the celebrity division. I'm like, man, he's gonna, he's gonna be tough to beat. Yeah, he's building the course right at his house. I mean, I mean, he goes and plays with razors over at Travis's house. I mean, how how do you how do you go wrong? Well, actually, you do go wrong over there because usually you're, <laughs> you're going to break something. But uh, he's building the uh, track at his house. He's got a couple of buddies that come over right now, and and we're working on getting him uh, a Polaris razor for him to get training for you know our September kickoff here of Terracross and. And yeah, it's uh, it's pretty exciting. We, Nate and I have known each other a long time. We've traveled around the the globe and hit different countries together for some for some courses and builds and site surveys. And and what a great guy, you know, leader in the the BMX, um, obviously course building and and BMX uh, 
movement of all times and just a great individual, as you all know, to be around. And, and I never knew that he had this passion for off-road like he does. And when we first started talking about it, he was going nuts. And I'm like, it's just, it's just tear across. It's just some players razor. We're out having a great time on, you know, CBS sports network television. And he is, he was pumped. He was hooked from the start. And then a buddy came over with a machine. He was driving it. And, and from there it was just like, all right, mate, we're going to make this happen. It doesn't matter how or what or why, but we are going to make it happen. And, and, uh, this morning we got the release out and, uh, Nate's racing. We're working on uh, some potential partners for uh, for Nate, and uh, and he's looking uh, as well for some to to support him in his travels and and um, you know some entry fee stuff. But other than that, uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty excited, and uh, he brings just such a great uh, presence to an event. And uh, you know, he knows everybody. He's been around the action sports world forever. Um, great family, and uh, yeah, just super. Super excited to have him on board with Caracol. Yeah, you know, and I, I'm looking at this from a driver's standpoint. I'm like, you've got like a group of mad scientists, Joe Duncan. So you've got Dana Creech, who he, he, he's he got a few screws loose in a good way. Dana's my boy. You got Luberg, and he, we know he's just Luberg, right? I mean, he's just an animal. And then you've got Hubert, and now you've got Nate, who's a legendary ramp builder. You know, Hubert's a legendary track builder. You've got, you know, Dana and Luberg, who can both build like crazy. I'm like, you surrounded yourself. I mean, we could get some. Some, I mean, some absolutely insane track builds with these four guys, I think. If if there was a fly on the wall listening to what uh, what Nate and I have been talking about, what's going to come for 2018 and 2019, we'll be doing some testing here this, uh, this fall, but there is going to be some really badass stuff coming for old Terracross. And Nate, with his... his um, creative mind and and ability to build anything and then with having a razor at his house with a with a terracross course sitting there and with him having to because it's a nature to figure out things that we can do with a razor i'm super excited and super pumped to see where uh where this is going to take us but uh you know how we work at terracross we like our courses to be rough, tough, and muddy. And you add in a a, a builder like Nate with ideas, um, uh, off the wall ideas that uh, are going to be able to be tested beforehand. We're we're going to get exciting. And you think we have great television right now? Wait till you see what uh, what uh, the ideas have been flowing. Yeah, I'm I'm excited, man. It's uh, I know you you told me on the phone, uh, so we are for sure. Things kicking off at Heydays. That's going to be the first event of the year, and then all the all the remaining rounds are going to follow after that. But I mean, what a great place to kick things off at Heydays. Uh, you know, I've been going out there a couple of years now, and it, it's to the point where I, I think I told somebody they're like, "Well, how is Heydays?" And I said, "Look, if I wasn't racing Terracross at Heydays." It's to the point I think I would still go to Heydays. Like it's just that cool of a place and a venue, you know. This is this will be like my 25th or 26 years going to Heydays. I mean, it all started from snowmobiles 50, you know, 50 years ago. Last year was the 50th anniversary, and uh, and it all started from a couple of snowmobiles drag racing in a field, and has turned into this, you know, carnival in the middle of a hayfield, <laughs> and uh, it's pretty amazing the stuff that happens and goes on there, daytime, nighttime, anytime. And uh, Terra Cross and our our Freestyle Expo uh, is smack dab in the middle of it, and uh, a huge uh, you know a huge uh, entertainment facility outside of the all the manufacturers and the dealers and the swappers and the characters and the food and the beverage and the beer barns and everything else. It is uh, it is one heck of a one heck of a fun event, and it's a great way for us to kick off Terra Cross. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely a heck of a kickoff to Terracross, and 
Uh, had some fun. I don't know. We, it seems like we always get some great personalities in for that event to come race. And uh, I don't know. Everything about it is uh, is just right. So um, I know we got – man, we got – you've got some big announcements been rolling out. Obviously, Nate Wessel. I know we've been talking the past couple of weeks with Optimus. And, and uh, I know you had said – so now with Nate being in, um, I mean, the men's and the women's and the celebrity class, I know there's a little bit of wiggle room for some new, new entries, but you guys are getting pretty close to being book solid, man. Yeah, we've got, uh, you know, our turbo machines, our Polaris uh, Razor Turbos, 160 horsepower. Uh, yeah, they're, they're already in in the uh, the race shop at Kitu Motorsports getting prepped and ready for the season. We have all the women's XT1000s at the, at the farm ready to be uh, prepped and wrapped and ready. And like I said, uh, yeah, I think there's a couple spots left in the turbo class. I think there's one spot left in the women's class. There's like three, maybe four spots at the most in the uh, in the Celebrity X class. Our, even our hero military class, old Jeff Skase said Optimus and the boys over there, uh, they've got some uh, amazing, amazing military heroes um, already being lined up to come and race Terracross with us this year. So super pumped on how the how the uh, classes are filling up uh, we we have a couple of surprises in the works Polaris and Terracross are working on you know possibly another little uh, another little explosion coming out here in uh, in the fall but uh, but uh, yeah we're super pumped on uh, on where where we're headed and all the all the people that have come back and all the new uh, people next week as a matter of fact there's going to be another big announcement. Um, press release will go out next Tuesday, Terracross Tuesday in the morning, and uh, we'll have uh, somebody new on the show with you, Jimmy. That's uh, that's going to be big, and and talk about contacts and connections and and potential bringing some big names to Terracross. This gentleman and this yeah. company are going to be bringing some names and some and some uh, some fold old Terracross. Yeah, I know who it is, and just let me tell you, this one isn't going to disappoint to, for you listeners, and it's definitely going to help. Uh, you know, not that Terracross needs help, but uh, it's definitely going to bring a lot to uh, the Terracross championship. So, looking forward to having him yep. on air, and uh, looking forward to seeing how that relationship builds. But uh, definitely, definitely good stuff. But uh, appreciate you taking the time, Joe. And uh, you know, I got uh, Nate Wessel coming up. We got lots to talk about as far as Terracross goes. Sounds great. Uh, have fun with Nate, and I will uh, talk to you soon, Jimmy. Thanks always, as always. All right. Thanks a lot, Joe. All right. See you later. Bye. All right. And we are going to take a short commercial break here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Nate Wessel up after the break. Following him, it's Adam, the Ace Corolla. Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. When R.J. Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship-winning Razor XP1000. R.J. is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder RJ Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount the subaru wrx and wrx sti a 268 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine rockets the wrx around corners and down straightaways a race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine keeps the wrx sti a rally legend 
the Subaru WRX and WRX STI. It's not a sibling rivalry. It's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. MMA at its best and it's back. It's the RUF 13. Live cage fights on the river in the Blue Water Resort and Casino Showroom Saturday, May 13th with, with live, live fights, fights starting at 7 p.m. Get your $25 ringside tickets now. General admission is just $15. Doors open at 6 p.m. Tickets available online or at the gift shop. Live cage fights on the river. Blue Water Resort and Casino. Right on the water. Right on the money. Hey everyone, this is Sean Wheelock inviting you to check out our new MMA podcast, Sean Funky and the Baddest Man, right here on Podcast One. Every week I'll be with welterweight titleist Ben Funky Askren and the baddest man on the planet, Joe Warren, to take you inside the sport of MMA. So join us every Wednesday for all new episodes of Sean Funky and the Baddest Man. Download and listen at PodcastOne.com, the Podcast One app, and subscribe on iTunes. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Joining me on the line, my buddy and, uh, I guess, fellow Terracross racer, Nate Wessel. How's everything going, Nate? Really good, man. How are you doing? All pretty good, man. I was stoked to hear this news. I know you and I had chatted about it a couple of months back and uh, privately, and you were working on it. But uh, And I know Joe and you had been working on it. But, dude, stoked to have you out at Terracross. It's going to be a fun, fun year, I think. I've been smiling ear to ear every single time that I like talk to Joe. Seriously, it's like I'm a little kid in the candy store like every day because I'm like, how can I make this happen? Whatever. And Joe's been helping me the entire way. I mean, we've known each other for so long through all the X Games events and stuff we've done. And uh, dude, I'll do anything to do this. Like, it's seriously been a lifelong dream. Like I had told you before, and I it's I seriously blown away that it's actually happening and I can't even, I, I can't even put into words like how elated I am about this. Yeah. Well, it's like I was telling him, I said, I, I don't know what the heck he's, he's, he's constructing this crew. Like, because I told him, I said, now you're bringing in <laughs> Nate. I said, you got Hubert, you know, who can flat build some tracks. And then you got, you got Dana Creech and Jason Luberg. And I'm like, you know, you throw in Nate Wessel in your mind. I'm like, you got four like mad scientists as far as track builds go. And I'm like, man, I have no idea what's going to be in store for us this year. It's <laughs> just like, wow. I don't think, I don't think anybody, anybody does not even Joe, because like, the ideas that I gave him, he was like, holy cow. Like, I, I mean, it, it's going to like flip the scripts on how everything's been in the past. Like it's going to be a whole new ball game coming into like 2018. If we actually do some of the things that we're talking about, just the one idea that I had alone. And I was laughing. It was kind of a joke when I told Joe and I was like, well, this would be funny, but you know, and then he's just like, oh, my God, like, we should, we need to do this, you know? <laughs> so it's, <laughs> if we can make any, like, just one of the things happen that I was talking about, it would just be so mental. Like, it would be, it would be fun for everybody, you know? Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Dude, before we talk more about Terracross, I gotta, I gotta put you on the spot because last week it happened after my podcast and I'm like, man, I gotta talk about it this week on air. But Animal Chin, that ramp. I mean, dude, that is – I saw that video go up, and I think it was Ride BMX that posted it the first time I saw it. I'm like – and, and it, yep. granted, you would be involved with it, right? But, I mean, how awesome was it to rebuild that ramp? I mean, I've known about this since I was a kid. Well, you know, it's in a couple aspects, man. Um, seriously, a lot of, like, dream-come-true scenarios have happened to me, like, just over the last couple of years. And growing up, like, I was a skateboarder for eight years before I even started riding BMX. So, like, Thrasher was my Bible, you know. Yeah. And, like, and, of course, like, the guy I looked up to in ramp building was Tim Payne. I uh, Like, you know, just more so his mentality with design and all those things. He was light years ahead of anybody because he was just building stuff that no one else built. So that's, like, what I wanted to do. It was, like something that like i was like i love this guy's thinking that's what i want to do so of course that was like such an iconic thing for me in my childhood growing up and you know more so when i got asked to do it i said the only way i'm going to do this is if tim Payne's involved because 
I'm not stepping on like the guy that I idolized my entire career, you know, without doing it with him. So we did it together. And the coolest thing about it was like, I think half the crew is skateboarders and the other half the crew is BMXers. And a lot of people don't know this, but Ron Kimler was working on the job with me. Um, you know, I just, it felt so like rad to have BMXers on the job because BMXers not, never saw the light of day on that ramp, yeah. you know? And we finished that ramp. And the first error that was done on that ramp right after we finished it was Ron Kimler doing like eight and nine foot errors on it. So it's like all these things, it was just like emotional in so many different ways that like, BMX finally gets to ride this ramp. The first air was done on it. Like, and of course you won't see that any, in any of the documentary, but, um, that they did on it, but it's just like childhood dream, man. Couldn't have asked for like, you know, I never thought anything in a million years would happen like that, that I would get to be a part of the animal chin ramp, let alone build it with Tim Payne. And then let alone BMX being allowed to be on it for the rest of its life now. Yeah. How, how was, I mean, cause obviously you got to ride that. I mean, I, I'm looking at that. What is it like a 12 foot spine? I mean, a mini ramp on the deck. Like I'm just looking at it going, I mean, what's it like to hit a 12 foot spine? I mean, I've hit like six and a half foot spines before, but I mean, 12 foot <laughs> spine, like I can't even fathom, you know? Um, I can't fathom it either. Cause I'm never hitting that. Spot <laughs> in my life. I'm more of like dirt jumper, park rider, street rider. Yeah. Guy. Like I kind of always stayed away from Bert and stuff, man. But I mean, they just had, like, an old-school BMX reunion there, and some dudes threw down on that ramp. Like, it was un- unbelievable. But that, you know, it's like I- I'm looking forward to, like, a bunch of different guys getting to come there and be able to ride it now. And actually, because no one's ever had the opportunity to ride the animal chin ramp or a, yeah. you know, vert spine that's, like, 11 or 12 feet tall. You know, it's it's going to be really interesting what uh, some of these, like, yeah up and coming riders are going to like make happen on that thing. Yeah, I'm waiting to see Matt Hoffman hit that, you know, cuz I'm looking at a guy like that and going this is like <laughs> yeah. right up Matt's alley, you know. Oh, it's going uh, to be amazing. Yeah, for sure. So, going back to Terracross, man, I just I had to talk about that cuz it just that video just came out I think in the past week and I'm like, "All right, it's perfect. We got Nate on. I got to talk about this cuz I'm geeking out over it, you know." But heck, uh, heck yeah, man. Uh, no, Terracross, I know you guys have been doing some tracks and shredding some stuff. I know you've been uh, running them around for the past couple of years at Pastranas too, right? Yeah, I mean, every time I go down there, uh, you know, I try to get some seat time in them. It's, like I said, I've always wanted to drive, you know, trophy trucks or something, and I just never thought I'd have the opportunity. i just like, who am I to – they're not going to put me behind the wheel of a quarter-million-dollar machine – and then, you know, when the Polaris Razor came out, it was like, oh, my God, this is more of a reality, you know, than, you know, these things are 25 grand. This is actually something I might be able to do someday. And, you know, not even thinking of a race series, but all of a sudden all these things just started falling into place, like Joe being a part of the Terracross series and going, oh, my God, I think I have the opportunity to race. What? And I, I'm just so giddy about it. Like, I've been looking for property for about five years now. And then, like, the perfect home fell, like, right in my lap, like, during, uh, right before Christmas. And I kind of just uh, jumped the gun and got it. And the first thing I did, I don't even have a razor or anything yet. The first thing I did was build a, a you know, a, basically a razor track on my property on 15 acres. <laughs> and I don't even ha- I don't even own one. But my buddy has a machine, and he came over with his dozer. We dozed it all up and then we've just been ripping his thing around the property and it's uh been seriously one of the funnest things i've ever done in my life and uh you know it's like i've done a lot of cool things in my life but when i'm behind the wheel of one of those things like i can't even explain to anybody how amazing it is you know and you just feel safe in it like with a cage and all the stuff and I guess I'm getting older with age, getting a cage, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like, I still like riding, but I, you know, I, I can tell you like when I go to even to the skate park and stuff, I flow around and have some fun, but I don't do, you know, if there's something questionable, generally I err on the side of caution. It's like, I oh, probably shouldn't be doing that. Totally, you know what yeah. I mean? So it's like, I totally, because I've got so many other things going and I'm like, man, Jimmy with a broken leg doesn't earn a paycheck at this day and age, you know? So it's like, <laughs> it's, it's so hard to turn the switch off when you're stoked and especially like, on our bikes over Baghdad trips, like it's hard to turn the switch off. Like you're riding with all your friends and I don't get a lot of riding time anymore, but I'm like, there's probably some stuff I try that I shouldn't, but I mean, that's kind of why I'm looking forward to Terracross because 
I mean, I'm going to go for it, man. It's just like, I feel a little bit safer. I'm like pretty good at driving the machines and I can't wait to get seat time just like on my own property. Like Joe is saying, man, we're going to test some serious things out, I think, and make a lot of really cool things happen. And I want to explore the possibilities of these things because my mind just is going totally nuts. And I I can't stop thinking about all these things that are possible now. Yeah, and I know, like, even on the West Coast, like, with the R.J. Anderson's new video, the Martellis and those guys are building, like, you know, wall rides and trying to build grind rails and stuff like that. And I think we're just now where, you know what I mean, we're starting to explore what these things po- quite possibly could do. It's like, you know, it's like we're at the birth of this new, you know, kind of, you know, seeing where this will go. And I think, you know, nobody really has any idea, you know, the limits and, and what we're going to see in the next, you know, couple of years. I know. I just, I've been a part of a couple stunts. Like we did the, the hot wheels corkscrew and we, we barrel rolled a desert buggy 92 feet, you know? So that is a lot similar to like how the razor is. I, I already have a lot of experience with like that car. And I'm telling you, like, those are the kinds of crazy things I'm thinking of. Maybe not so much for Terracross, of course, cause that's a little on the wild end, but like, man, I have some ideas in my head that, are so out in left field right now that I'm just going to try some of this stuff on my own and uh, make sure I have an airbag, I think, to yeah, all right. some of them. <laughs> yeah, well, that's one of those things you can think it out in your head, and then all of a sudden you build the ramp or something, and you know, and you're like, oh, man, was that a fail? That didn't rotate the way I thought it was going to be or exactly. something like that. Yeah, you know? well, that's, the, that's, that's the beauty about working with Travis because, yeah. like, I think most of the stuff between him and I, like how we think about the stuff, most of it's pretty worked out as we're building the ramp. Yeah, there's changes to the ramp, but we're so close. Like when we get there that, and you know, the more things you do like that, you know, that I have all this experience now from doing things with him that it's easy to move forward on these like outlandish ideas because they're probably actually going to work, you know? Yeah. All right, man. Well, I know you and I could talk uh, quite a bit. We'll have to catch back up on the podcast sometime soon, man, so we can kind of go at length. But, Definitely, uh, man. Yeah, super stoked to have you in Terracross this year, and uh, I know i got to get out to the East Coast at some point and go and have some fun with you guys. Yeah, please do, man. All right. Take it easy, buddy. We'll definitely talk soon. See you, Jim. Bye. All right. See you, buddy. All right, that was Nate Wessel, legendary ramp builder and uh, legendary BMX rider uh, on the show. He's going to be racing Terracross 2017. Definitely looking forward to that. We're going to take a short break. Adam Carolla on the line when we come back. Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Players driver, and I drive Players because it's the most capable race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. When R.J. Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship-winning Razor XP1000. R.J. is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder RJ Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. about sound the sound of sports the sound of the racetrack and the sound of your vehicle don't drive around listening to this drive around listening to the sound of performance gibson performance gibson performance exhaust is the company who can turn this into this remember that life is all about sound and gibson exhaust is the sound of performance check out your next catback exhaust system headers muffler or utv exhaust at gibsonperformance.com and get more power and more sound Do you race or are you a weekend warrior? Have you checked on the date on your helmet recently? Don't get caught off guard by using an outdated helmet. Impact Racing, the leader in motorsport safety, has new SA 2015 helmets to fit your budget. Whether you're looking for a helmet with a full carbon fiber shell to take you to victory at the Indy 500 or just looking for some helmets for a weekend at Glamis, Impact Racing has a helmet for you. Find out more information at impactraceproducts.com or on Facebook at Impact Safety. 
Since 1970, KC Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports, beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems. KC Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at kchighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at KC highlights the subaru wrx and wrx sti a 268 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine rockets the wrx around corners and down straightaways a race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine keeps the wrx sti a rally legend the subaru wrx and wrx sti it's not a sibling rivalry it's a tag team Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver here, just got done with Nate Wessel, and our Terracross starts with Optimus segment. Uh, right now, we got a little clip. From my interview with Adam Carolla, we had to cut it a little short. It goes at length. You want the full thing? You got to tune in to Project Action this Thursday. But here's Adam Carolla and I talking cars, racing, and a whole lot more. like to welcome my next guest to the line, Adam Carolla. How's everything going, Adam? It's going real well. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, well, I know... It was about a month back. I know I was in studio over there and did uh, car casts, and since then, man, you've uh, brought home a bit of hardware. How was uh, how was that Trans Am, man? That's uh, that's pretty pretty legit. Yeah, thanks. Uh, it was pretty intense uh, for for the beginning part um, because I hadn't driven a, a legitimate modern day uh, Trans Am car. Um, so, you know, what it, what happened was, is, uh, somebody said to me like three months ago, like, Hey, I got you a ride in a Trans Am car for, for an official Trans Am race out at, uh, Willow Springs. And they told me that, you know, s- several months ago and I did what I always do. I just said, fine, sounds good. You know, <laughs> sign me up, which is sort of a mistake in terms of things that I do. I do them career wise. I do them for driving. I do it just about anything. And, uh, and you know, then I realized I, you know, I'm, I'm going in the middle of doing a TV show. I was gearing up to do this one hour live TV show and I, I wasn't getting any track time. And, and I, I don't, it's a Corvette. It's got 850 horsepower and there's three Trans Am divisions this was Trans Am 1. This is the top, like the big dog, <laughs> biggest, fastest cars out there. And then also uh, Willow Springs, like it's called the fastest track in the West. And I'm not a, I don't even like Willow Springs. I'm not very good on that track. I much prefer somewhere like Laguna Seca. I got a lot more uh, seat time at Laguna Seca. But um, so next thing you know, it's just the weekend of the race, I'm right in the middle of production and I, you know, I just kind of head out on a Friday morning and there's this crazy beast of the C seven R full race prep Corvette. And I don't even know how it shifts or anything. And they're like, it's sequential. You ever use a sequential gear shift? And I'm like, no, I've never <laughs> done that. How's it work? Trial by fire. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, well, I, do I need to push the clutch in? And like, well, if you want, you can do it. You don't have to, but you could. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> I don't even know if I fit in the car. And the uh, next thing you know, it's a smash. And then uh, it was also a 40-lap a race. And I, I usually do 10-lap races. You know, I'm in the car for like 20 minutes doing vintage races. Yeah. Um, it's a 40-lap race and a two-and-a-half-mile course. I'm like, geez be in the car for a while yeah. here uh and long story short um somehow got into it figured it out uh, got my groove a little stall started 
following some fast guys and made a pass or two and ended up uh, on the podium with a third place finish. So it was pretty, everyone was, I don't think anyone was more surprised than I was, but <laughs> everyone was pretty damn surprised. Well, maybe that's the way you need to do it all the time. Just show up and drive. You you can overthink things, and maybe that's been the problem, right? You overthink things. It's like, oh, just show up and race, and maybe that's maybe that's the ticket there. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I well, no, I, no, I always show up and race, and it doesn't <laughs> usually work out that well. So, <laughs> well, here's here's a question for you because you do a lot of vintage racing, and I mean, and when you vintage race, I mean, it's in proper proper vintage race cars i mean you know jumping into this corvette this modern day just amazing road racing car i mean what's the biggest differences because i mean you've driven some cars you know some vintage cars that were at the top of their game you know 30 40 years ago i mean what's the difference in jumping into this corvette now say is you know what i mean you know newman's porsche from uh you know the 79 that you just bought um the 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 new cars, and, and I mean, this Corvette was, you know, full tube frame beast, just a beast of a car is, is, is you know, about as fast as those kind of cars with bodies on them get. I mean, it had 850 yeah. horsepower, but it was still dialed in. It, 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 the brakes worked, the steering worked, the suspension was tuned for the track, you know, when, when I would go out and come off that after doing, you know, qualifying or warm up or practice or whatever, some tech would plug his computer in and start m- m- messing around with this perches on the, the struts for the springs or add a little more of this or put a little more, you know, dial in a little more sway bar or something like that. And so the, the end result was, even though the car was a crazy, loud, insane beast, it felt kind of like a car, you know, felt like kind of more drivable in its own sort of 850 horsepower kind of way than the, than, than my vintage cars, which really feel like old cars. Like they don't, the brakes aren't always there. The steering's tough, you know, as far as the suspension goes, like who knows, you know, the best as we can do it, but it's, it's never really like yeah. dialed in arrow, you know, no arrow, you know, that the vet had a ton of downforce, you know, and you could carry a ton of speed into the turn a big sweeping turn, you know, going 160 miles an hour and it, it would stay put, you know, you know, the stuff I drive has like, you know, no arrow, no anything. So in a weird way, the crazy beastly vet was easier. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, I come from racing trophy trucks, right? And I've said we can put anybody in a trophy truck no matter what your driving skill level is, and you can still be pretty fast because they're so forgiving and they're they're so dialed in. You know, whereas you go to a vintage off-road truck from, say, 20, 30 years ago, you really had to be a driver to drive one of those because you make one little mistake and it's, you know, you're up on your lid, you know. So I completely get that. It seems like these new cars have got so fast that, you know, it can take a bad driver and make them good, if that makes any sense. I, I think I think so. I mean, we had a um, in 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 the uh, Trans Am two or three. There was a Lamborghini uh, Gallardo Trofeo or, or whatever, and it's like all wheel drive. I think it had some kind of traction control. You know, paddle shift. You know, I think it I think it like blipped the throttle. You know, when you downshifted. And it was like, geez, that guy, that's kind of like driving a just a really cool supercar in a race, yeah. you know. And the guy's still going fast and everything, but the the, the vintage cars, you're 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 sweating in those things. <laughs> I mean, you're working, you're working, and you know, I was working in this Corvette, but I, not as hard as I work in in the in the vintage cars. Although I, I'll say this about the vet the speed is a lot faster. So stuff's happening a lot faster, yeah. you know, even, even though the brakes work better, stuff's coming at you a lot faster. And, um, also with 850 horsepower and it's right there, like you just tap the throttle and it's, 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 it's on, it's 
pretty easy to bring that rear end around. Like it, it just took a little while to get used to it, but I liked it. And, uh, I, I, I would, I would be happy to drive more modern cars yeah. that were less, less of a challenge. Yeah. Going back to the vintage cars, I want to talk real quick about your collection because I know I had, Matt showed me the collection, uh, over there and, uh, you know, and I love it, you know, and one thing I really love about it is I've been to a lot of car collections. Yours is so different than everybody else's. And I mean, you know, seeing vintage Nissan race cars and Datsuns and you've got, you know, Lamborghini Miras. And I mean, what, what's the basis? I mean, when you look at cars, I mean, what, what is it that Adam Carolla goes, Oh, wow, that, that's something I want to target because your collection is different than anything I've ever seen before. Oh, well, thanks. Uh, I, you know, I just have stuff I like. And if I like it, uh, I want it. And, um, and Dotson, anything in race trim, I like a lot. Um, you know, something that I want that I don't have that I've always kind of wanted was a M1 pro car. For instance, if you just talking about cars that I would like, um, aesthetically, I think the Mira is one of the best looking cars ever made. And, um, you know, other than that, I don't know, onward and upward. We'll just see what's next. I, I keep an eye out, especially for Newman related stuff. Um, but, but other than that, I don't, I don't have a real, um, I don't have a, I don't have a set of criteria. I just, whatever flips my cookie, you know? Yeah. How was it when you finally got that, uh, the 79 Porsche, uh, just recently? I mean, that had to have been a pretty big feather in your cap, right? You've been targeting that for a while. Yeah, that wasn't, you know, that was for me just sort of a, I didn't even know that car would come up for sale in my lifetime. I, I, I didn't, I, I never thought it was just sort of, um, you know, Moby Dick yeah. for me, although there is a Porsche called Moby Dick, <laughs> but <laughs> Uh, it was not that Moby Dick. It was my white whale. And then at some point it just came up for sale. And I just thought I got to do everything I can to get a hold of this thing. Yeah. Well, I know uh, the guy sent me over and I'd, I'd seen pieces of it. I finally got to watch it at length. But I know you've also got your company, Chassis Media. And I want to talk about that because uh, the 24-hour war, uh, just watching through that last night, you know, in length, like the full thing, you know, uh, uncut. And I went, Man, there's so much that comes back to me that I've heard pieces of through my lifetime, you know what I mean? But to have it all in one place and to hear all these stories, I mean, uh, that had to have been a, a really fun project for you guys. I mean, I know it was time-consuming, but uh, to see all that in one place and these interviews and, and the story there, it's so tremendous. I mean, how, how did that whole project come about? Uh, you know, we make movies. Uh, we're car guys. We like making really good high quality movies for car guys like the Paul Newman doc, which is uh, winning the racing life of Paul Newman. And the next story that just came up was, was that we're reading AJ Bain's book about it. Uh, go like hell. And I read the book and I thought, man, what is this is a great story. And we just set about doing that as our next, next high quality car doc. And, and, and we feel like, the car community is underserved. You know, they, yeah. there, there, there are plenty of movies about cars, but they're made by car guys. <laughs> and even though they're passionate, they're a little rough around the edges. And when it comes to production and quality, and we wanted to do something that took the car as a theme because we're car guys, but we're also movie makers and just sort of combine the, the two to have a really high quality, car movie yeah you know what you know what really brought back to me is i i forgot you know because i drive race cars and i i crash and it's like no big deal i know i'm gonna nine times out of ten walk away from it you know and i've got friends and you watch the indy 500 and guys crash and it's no big deal they get out and they walk away maybe they've got you know you know got a concussion which is not good but you know but i forgot how much gladiators i mean these guys they were risking fire and i mean they got into the car and it was a good chance that they weren't going home afterwards, you know, and uh, I forgot, you know, and through that story, it brought it back and went, man, these guys really, they had balls of steel back then, you know, to do what they did and, and walk in knowing, hey, there's a really good chance I'm not walking out of it, man. It was like the Roman Coliseum back in the day or something, you know, it was, it, it was really tremendous to see that told wow. again. 
All right. And if you want the rest of my Adam Carolla interview, you got to tune into Project Action this week, dropping this Thursday. You can get the whole Adam Carolla interview uncut uh, right there at Project Action on uh, Podcast One and iTunes, as well as downunderdershow.com. So that's going to be dropping this Thursday. Make sure and catch the whole thing there. Um, definitely good stuff talking with the ace. Adam Carolla. We're going to take a short break. We come back. We're wrapping things up here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable, race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. When RJ Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship-winning Razor XP1000. RJ is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder RJ Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. As certain as the sun rises and sets around the world, OTSFF Group is dedicated to providing flexible, comprehensive, and reliable transportation solutions. Air transportation, ocean freight, ground transportation, or a combination of services. We offer innovative and custom-built packages specifically designed to meet your transportation needs. OTSFF Group has been keeping shipments moving globally for nearly two decades. OTSFF Group, flexible logistic services designed for you. More information at OTSFF tsff.com Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver here to wrap things up on another edition of the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Uh, big thanks to my guest today, obviously my partner in crime, Amy Hood. Got to give a shout out to uh, my partner in Razor Star Car, Jolene Van Vute, Joe Duncan, Nate Wessel, Adam Carolla. If you want the rest of that Adam Carolla interview, don't forget, tune into Project Action this Thursday. Uh, drop it on iTunes, Podcast One, the Podcast One app, and downanddirtyshow.com. And that's going to be a good one. Make sure and subscribe, rate, and review. If you do that, I will follow you back if you leave your at Twitter, Instagram username in the comments. Um, also, uh, don't forget this Friday, live from Contingency at the UTV World Championship, myself and Sarah Price will be doing some live radio, 1 o'clock Pacific time. We'll have the biggest and the best in racing and UTV racing, that is, uh, they're live with us on the show from the UTV World Championship. It's going to be a good one. You definitely, definitely don't want to miss out on that. And um, 
Man, we got, uh, we're got we going to have full coverage of UTV World Championship next week. Some Supercross coverage. A Lucas Short Course going to be kicking off. We're going to be covering that as well. Uh, give me a follow. It's at Jim Beaver 15 on Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook. Just search Jim Beaver. Amy Hood is at Amy Hood 71 on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And, uh, you know, looking for a coupon code at Dirtfish Rally School. Use that coupon code JB Dirtfish for 15% off your next uh, class there. Um, definitely uh, thanks to my friends at Dirtfish, my helmet sponsor this year, uh, always uh, helping out our uh, our listeners. Big shout out to Polaris Razor, General Tire, Subaru, KC Highlights, Gibson Exhaust, Dirtfish, Impact, Terracross, Blue Door Resort and Casino, and OTSFF Group. And uh, if you haven't already, go to my Facebook page, listen and watch the uh, Polaris Razor Star Car video from the Mint 400. We've got another one coming at you after the UTV World Championship. Almost at 100,000 views. Hopefully you can help us get us over the hump. And um, that's about it. That's all I got for you guys this week. We're going to sign off here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Be safe. As always, game on. 